Newton's law of gravitation says that the gravitational force between the sun and the earth varies inversely proportional to the distance squared between them. But have you ever thought, how did Newton find out the distance between the sun and the earth? Before we begin our discussion on today's question, let me quickly recall that in the last session, we discussed about the mathematical objects that appears in the Newton's law. In particular, we discussed the concept of time. In today's session, we are going to discuss on the concept of distance. Now, let me ask you this question. What is the distance between my two hands? You may answer it about half a meter. Now, I can ask, how do you measure this distance? The answer is simple. Just take a measuring tape like this and then measure the distance between my two hands. Right? Now, what if I ask you, how do you measure the distance between the sun and the earth? Would you be able to use a measuring tape like this? No? Then, how did Newton figure it out? In any case, it is clear that we need a measuring scale of astronomical size. In this regard, let me show you a statement. The earth is a sphere. Can you guess who was the first person to write down the statement and when? The statement was written down by Aristotle almost 2400 years ago. His arguments for it were based on two simple observations about the lunar eclipses. Firstly, lunar eclipses occur always in the full moon nights. As you may know, on the full moon nights, the sun sets in the west and the moon rises from the east almost at the same time. In other words, during a lunar eclipse, the sun is always in a diametrically opposite position of the moon as seen from the earth. This observation led Aristotle to conclude that the alignment of sun, earth and the moon and the occurrence of lunar eclipses must be connected. Consequently, he concluded that lunar eclipses are caused by the shadows of the earth. Secondly, during a lunar eclipse, the boundary of the shadow on the surface of the moon is always a circular arc. You may see in this picture, such shadows can be caused by a disk in a given particular orientation or by a sphere in any orientation. Given such boundaries are always observed for all lunar eclipses in all different positions of the sky, then Aristotle concluded that Earth must be a sphere. I am sure you may have heard about many other non-scientific explanations for lunar eclipses. However, here you notice that the explanation given by Aristotle requires no other assumptions apart from few simple observation. Having known that that earth is a sphere, the distance to the moon was soon established by Aristarchus of Samoa in 300 BC. Similar to Aristotle, Aristarchus also based his conclusion on very simple observation. Firstly, lunar eclipses were known to last around three hours at the most. Secondly, the moon takes about a month, say 30 days for simplicity, to make a full rotation around the earth. As you see here, using basic geometric diagram, Aristarchus was able to estimate the angle theta as you see in this diagram. In 300 BC, the value of the pi was not known very well and also the trigonometry was not 
very well developed. Nevertheless, using very simple calculation, Aristarchus concluded that the distance to the moon is about 60 times the radius of the earth. Modern measurement tells us that distance to the moon which orbits the earth in an elliptical orbit varies between 57 to 63 times the radius of the earth. Having measured the distance to the moon, then Aristarchus proceeded to find the distance to the sun, again using few simple observations. During the different phases of the moon, at a particular time moon can be seen to be half illuminated. So, when the moon is exactly half illuminated, as seen from the earth, then the moon forms a right angle with sun and the earth. So as you see here, the angle SME is 90 degree. Consequently, the angle SEM is less than 90 degree. Let us now denote this angle by theta. Now again, using basic trigonometry, the ratio to the distance to the moon and distance to the sun can be written as cosine theta. By simply looking at the moon, Aristarchus estimated that angle theta to be around 87 degree. So as you see here, by using simple calculation, then it leads that the distance to the sun is approximately 19 times the distance to the moon. So the distance to the sun can also be written as approximately 1140 times the radius of the earth. In modern measurement, the distance to the sun is approximately 390 times distance to the moon. So clearly here Aristarchus made a huge error unlike the distance to the moon where he was quite accurate although he used rather approximate values of pi and rudimentary trigonometry. In the modern measurement, the angle theta is approximately 89.9 degree. You know that for values of theta near 90 degree, the term 1 over cosine theta varies very rapidly even for a small variation of theta. And that's why Aristarchus actually made a large error unlike for the measurement of distance to the moon. I hope you have enjoyed today's session. In, in case you have a question, comment or a suggestion, please feel free to write them below in the comment section. And in case you would like to follow the physics discussion here, then you are welcome to subscribe to this channel.